This is Jason Anderson, Chairman of the Killing Town Council. It is currently 10.26 p.m. and we are out of executive session. We're moving on to item 5C on the agenda. What? 15. Oh, 15 wow. Well. Yep. We're, we're, <laughs> I apologize. We're moving on to item 15C on the agenda. Consideration and action on the resolution approving and authorizing the execution of a municip municipal host fee agreement with NE Edge LLC for its proposed qualified data center. Uh, can I get a motion to adopt this? So moved. Second. Motion has been made by Ms. Wakefield, second by Ms. George. Um, Ms. Clorio, if you could go over this, please. Yes, yeah, so this um, municipal host fee agreement is a payment in lieu of taxes for the um, data center that's currently being proposed. The base host fee starts at an initial payment of 3.5 million and escalates at 2.5% annually for the duration of the agreement. It's a 30-year agreement. Um, so the, uh, in the, at the 30-year mark, um, the uh, payment is uh, just a little over $7 million. For a total municipal host fee agreement payment, of a little over 150 million over the course of the term. Um, it also includes um, an additional additional payments. Uh, the first payment being at the time of the building permit issue of two and a half million, and that is um, that that additional payment is made on the fifth, tenth, fifteenth, twentieth, and twenty fifth year of the agreement. So the entire um, municipal host fee agreement um, economically is. A hundred and six, a little over a hundred and sixty-five million dollar agreement, and this is in um, compliance with the state statutes with regards to a qualified um, data center. So, qualified data centers under Connecticut state statutes would be exempt from taxes. They're required to get a municipal host fee agreement, um, and that is part of the requirements to bring forward that. Um, data center to the DECD for that qualification. The town council um, has the authority to um, act on this municipal host fee agreement. Um, and this is again just one of the initial steps that the data center has to go through for authorization. I, in the presentation previously given, um, there was a litany of uh, approvals and uh, requirements that they have to proceed through before they get to that um, final stage. This is a one of the initial requirements by the state um, in order for them to get through that process. So um, we've spent a fair amount of time going back and forth in negotiations. I think it's been a fair negotiation process um, on, on both sides of the fence. Um, it does, uh, the municipal host fee agreement does uh, um, indicate that there is no uh, gas diesel generation allowed on site along with you know other components so I think it it really uh, we tried to address a lot of the concerns that um, we felt that the community would have thank you any questions or comments from council seeing none all those in favor say aye 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 opposed Abstentions? I abstain. One abstention, Mr. Grandelsky. Motion carries. We'll move on on the agenda. Next item up is 15D. Consideration and action on a resolution to introduce and set a public hearing and public town meeting on July 11, 2023 on an ordinance to authorize a purchase and sale agreement to sell town property at 125 Alexander Parkway to NE Edge, LLC. So moved. Second. Motion made by Ms. Wakefield, second by Ms. George. Ms. Clorio, if you could go over this. This is the parcel at 125 Alexander Parkway. The purchase price for this um, property is set at $5,004,800. Um, it does include, the agreement does include a cumulative um, deposit of 250000 uh, 50000 would be um, released to the town at the two-year mark, um, and that be, that 50000 becomes non-refundable, and each year thereafter would be a $50,000 um, payment to the town um, as they continue to go through that process. Um, and unless they decide to transact and 
fully purchase the property, then the transaction occurs. Um, and that would, um, we do have in here that the, um, so typically the sale of town property, um, uh, many times the town council would um, put those funds into um, the Economic Development Trust. Um, the resolution is uh, the resolution is written, um, which would be open for conversation to the council later on, because this again is only setting the public hearing and the special town meeting. Would be to put fifty thousand of the purchase price, five hundred thousand of the purchase price to the Economic Development Trust, and the remaining balance into capital project fund, which would then later be determined by the town council which capital projects to be invested in. Um, but that was just a, the designation component of where the, if once transacted, where that would go. But um, this again is just setting the special hearing, the public hearing, the special town meeting for July 11th, your next uh, regular town council meeting. Thank you. Questions or comments from the council? Again, as Ms. Calorio said, this is just for setting the date for the public hearing. This isn't for uh, final approval of the sale. Seeing no comments, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Abstain. One abstention, Mr. Grandelsky. Motion carries. We will now move on on the agenda. Next item up is council member reports and comments. Uh, Mr. Grandowski, could you start? Um, as a show of authority, uh, the rec park for the uh, industrial park pump station is going to be open to start working on that. And there, uh, as far as personnel, they're getting interns from Ellis Tech to start to work at the sewer, to do some projects at the sewer plant, breaking them in. Um, and it just happens that one of those Interns was back in days when Arlene Gauthier would bring the kids from the middle school down to the sewer plant for a tour. So how many years ago and finally she's physically working down there. So, uh, and then as you know, as the, when Mary talked about the uh, uh, class four operator, so that, that's still a prop problematic down there. Um, on the uh, Conservation Commission, they were doing a walk. Um, they're doing some walks at, um, oh, I forget what the name of the park is. Um, but they're doing walks and they've got the bus tours. They're working on those. There are more, there are upcoming walkers with at Ross's Cliffs. Thank you. Mr. Whitehead? Thank you. Ms. Murphy? Um, I went to the agricultural meeting and they're still talking about their classes and they're having bee classes and there was a successful mushroom class and uh, the garden club is <coughs> successful. Other than that, I, that's what I remember. Thank you. Um, I attended the Inland Wetlands Water Course Commission. They had uh, couple permits that came forward one of them was one that's been dragged on for quite some period of time due to the fact that they couldn't uh, hold meetings um, they were able to finally get through that and that's all I have um, I last week I went to the Eastern Regional Tourism District annual meeting um, and we talked about um, there were 15 grant recipients um, throughout the district which is 41 towns that received um, funding anywhere from I believe it was like 500 up to uh, I think it was 10,000 5,000 anyway there were 15 different and and one thing was on the uh, I actually got to see the brochure um, they granted it's the historical society but it's for um, the graves the um, like throughout the quiet corner so they have this brochure and they're setting like trails and things. Um, and then Jill was voted in as our vice chair for the upcoming year. So congratulations to Jill. Um, today I had another Eastern Regional Tourism District meeting and we met with Anthony Anthony. That's his name. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, legit. 
that's his name. Um, <laughs> he is in charge of tourism for the state of Connecticut. So we gave him s the pros and cons, what we're seeing, um, how we can he can help us grow economically, and basically, you know, we want more funding put into uh, the website and each small town. And we let him know that we feel the the this particular there's four different regions for tourism, and they kind of forget us up here. So we sent a lot of feedback that we we want to be um, we want him to be more vocal in getting more funding to this area because we have a lot of good things happening not just in Killingly but in all these towns and we need more of a focus on the eastern region and I have Board of Ed tomorrow night and they will be interviewing to replace both Jason Mascara and uh, Chris Vance. So they have the two openings and that's all I have. Thank you. Ms. Wakefield? I attended um, Parks and Rec on May the 22nd. Um, they have been very, very busy. Um, they had a whole lot of stuff going on during April vacation. Um, the drumming circles are really taken off. Um, they actually had a QR scavenger hunt and they actually had 34 families participate in that. Um, they collected 300 pounds of peanut butter that went to the Friends of Assisi Food Pantry. The very first bike rodeo they had, one of our new newest people that we put on in the last year or so, um, he coordinated it. Our constables were involved, had 27 kids. And so um, they have a whole lot of productions coming up. July the 15th, actually, they have an adult prom. Mm -hmm. um, and they're going to be doing foot, the theater is going to be doing Footloose and, of course, Carrie, which, you know, I'm not a big fan of that one. Uh, Charlie Brown Christmas and a Steel Magnolias. Um, so there's there's a there's a whole lot of stuff going on, um, and so yeah, they're very very. Oh, and July, June the 30th is our Red, White, and Blue, and they are going to have the drumming circle before Red Light comes on, so like almost like the preemptive, like from four to whatever, and then Red Light's going to come on and kind of rock out the the park, and um, they are. Um, planning on rearranging the parking up on the top. Um, they're going to limit um, th only for handicap up there. Um, so there's not going to be any parking up. They're going to have to park at the Commons in, in Bell Park. Um, so, um, but uh, Rara, I mean, they got a good lineup to go um, produce stuff. So, um, all sorts of food, and of course, we'll be doing food, but. Um, anyways, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, I actually had to rework my schedule and I made, made a bargain so that it worked the weekend if I could have that Friday night off because I was supposed to work Friday night. So, um, but yeah, um, it's, it's going to be a good time. It's going to, I, I, we're going to be rocking out on Bell Park. Thank you. Ms. Barclay. I didn't attend the planning and zoning meeting because, um, we were at the auditorium at the high school for our, our budget. From the Killingly Housing Authority, the director's report, they're changing from Comcast, um, changing to Comcast from Breeze Line, and the cost is $37 per resident. And they're going to have a new f um, food service. Glen Glendale has been servicing them for five to six years, although they're, um, they've, their service has gone down since January, so they're going to go with a new provider. And they talked about renter's rebate, which is based on a percentage of the rent and the utilities paid, paid by um, a person based on their income. And they file in October, and they get paid in right before Christmas. And um, they just purchased a 2006 Chevy van for $10,000. Thank and you. And that's it. All right. We will now move on in the agenda. Next item up is adjournment. So moved. Second. Motion made by Mr. Grandelsky, second by Ms. Wakefield. Uh, discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? This meeting is adjourned.